Hello, you are watching Made in Kazakhstan Project. My name is Anton Fyodorov, and in this episode, I am set to explore the production potential of Almaty region. By the way, now I am in its administrative center, the city of Taldikorgan. Earlier, Almaty region was considered an agrarian region. Today, the industry is the main sector of region's economy development. Enterprises of various directions operate in Almaty region. Here are companies in the manufacturing, processing, mining and light textiles industries. The products of these enterprises are today exported to Russia, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Mongolia, the United Arab Emirates, Poland and Germany. Thus, the products under the brand, made in Kazakhstan, are already well known in the world. So, let's get started. How is instant noodles, a product that saved the life of the Japanese people, produced in Kazakhstan? Reporting from the underworld, my acquaintance with the work of the battery plant where liquid lead flows. Durability for centuries. How cement is produced in Kazakhstan? We will have a look at the volcano. So, my study of the economic and production potential of Almaty region begins with the city of Kapshagai. Here, an enterprise producing instant noodles and other pasta products operates on an area of 30,000 square meters. What's so great about instant noodles, you may ask? The history of this product goes back to 1958 and starts in Japan. Today, Japan is a country of the highest technologies and amazing innovative solutions. So, despite its technical success, Japan recognizes instant noodles as its best invention in the 20th century. Why? I'll tell you now. The history of instant noodles is connected with the name of Momofuku Ando, a man who became a national hero in Japan. In the post-war years, after prolonged bombing raids, Japan was on the verge of a food disaster. The humanitarian aid provided food and wheat flour to country inhabitants. Giant queues lined the streets of Japanese cities to local cafes and food distribution points, where noodles were made from this flour. Then Momofuku Ando came up with the idea of preparing the noodles so that they are cooked quickly and do not lose their taste. This is how instant noodles appeared, an invention that left behind karaoke, high-speed trains and laptops 60 years ago. Since then, the history of the industry began. Nowadays, more than 100 billion units of this product are consumed all over the world. In fact, the production of instant noodles and other pasta products starts from here. This is the flour storage area. Flour is delivered here on special vehicles, then it gets into these large containers. Flour is constantly circulating here, that is, the flour is saturated with oxygen, positively affecting the finished product. To prevent the flour from spoiling, it is kept in special containers for storing loose products. The necessary parameters for humidity, temperature and light are created inside. Before delivering flour for production, it is sifted and checked through magnetic catchers to exclude foreign objects from entering the food belt. The flour that is made in Kazakhstan is a rather unique project, much more competitive than the Russian flour. We proudly say that, firstly, it is made in Kazakhstan, and secondly, from Kazakhstan's wheat. We must meet all standards to produce high-quality products. Look, 
We use flour in very large quantities, be it first grade flour, premium flour, or durum wheat flour. It is more than a million tons per month. Accordingly, all the lines that we see here now operate with the main raw material, flour. So how is the high quality of the product achieved and its taste characteristics preserved? The process of dough kneading, the process of rolling and the process of cutting into thin threads correspond to what is done at home. Further, the only thing that distinguishes instant noodles is the roasting process that takes one minute. The noodles are fried at a very high temperature, over 150 degrees. Now let's get acquainted with the technology of instant noodles production. In the course of kneading, a flouring brine is added to it. The dough is kneaded not by hand, but in a special kneading machine. Up to 25 tons of flour pass through such kneaders per day. Now I am in the most important premises of the factory for the production of pasta and instant noodles. There are several production lines in this workshop where noodles are cut, then fried in special deep fat fryers and are sent to packaging. Now let's study each stage in more detail. Already finished dough is delivered in portions to special devices for rolling. Thickness sensors are triggered after each shaft. So a layer of dough of 1.5 centimeters becomes a thin plate of only one millimeter. This result is achieved using the latest technology. Our factory has installed lines of a new generation of manufacturers from Germany, Switzerland, Japan and Spain. Seven lines producing instant noodles, traditional pasta, mashed potatoes, snacks, broths, spices and chips were gradually launched. The rolled dough is cut into threads that go through several processing stages. The first is steaming, which takes place at a temperature of 100 degrees. This heat treatment gives the desired shape. Then noodles are soaked in the flavoring brine. After these processes, the noodles can already be boiled, moreover steaming does not allow it to turn into porridge. I would like to note that the plant was built in accordance with all modern standards. It is very clean here. Strict sanitary safety requirements are observed. Guests and visitors are dressed in special dressing gowns and such hats to ensure production safety. In addition, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that the temperature in this room is very high. Because the operating fryers in which instant noodles are fried generate a lot of heat. Next, the noodles are processed with air knives to remove excess moisture and then delivered to the cross-cutting section. On this belt, the machine divides the noodles into equal portions and further along the conveyor these briquettes go for frying in vegetable oil at a temperature of 145 to 160 degrees. The giant fryer works like a homemade frying pan. The product is fried for 2.5 minutes. Roasting provides complete sterilization of the product and prepares it for long-term storage. When we entered the Central Asian market, we had an idea to work not only in Kazakhstan, but throughout the entire territory of Central Asia, as well as neighboring countries such as China, Afghanistan, maybe Pakistan. Since 2018, we export our products. So we fully cover Kazakhstan and are very active in exporting. Now exports cover approximately 70% of our work. The finished portion of noodles is transported along a conveyor to the packaging unit. The vegetable additive, sauce and soup base are delivered there. 
All the way, there are points with laser and photo sensors. They check the packaging for all semi-finished products. If something is missing, the products are dropped off the conveyor and sent for additional analysis. Checked packages go to stores. So, the next point of my research of the industrial and production potential of Almaty region was the city of Taldikorgan, where the only battery production plant in Kazakhstan is located. In general, the history of this enterprise, this huge complex, which covers the area of 22 hectares, began in 1973, when the construction of the plant began. Two years later, in 1975, the first battery was produced. For 46 years of the enterprise's operation, the equipment has been modernized and today batteries are produced here using modern Anglo-American equipment. And now I will tell you how it all starts. It all starts with this unique synthetic element. It is polypropylene, a refined product. It is widely used in the production of various plastic products. Further, through special channels, polypropylene is delivered to melting chamber, where at a temperature of 170-180 degrees, it melts and takes on the necessary shape. This form, which is still warm, is the cover of the future battery, apparently for some kind of heavy transport. Go ahead. This plant has a full cycle of battery production, from casting parts and components to assembling finished products. Thanks to this, the company can reduce production costs, which means that the price of the product is lower than that of other manufacturers. Since the opening of the plant, the range of products has been very narrow. Later, after the country gained independence, we began to switch to the production of the so-called light group of batteries for passenger cars. Relatively speaking, this is from 30 to 230 ampere hours to this day. Our products cover the needs of entire market of existing vehicles. Battery manufacturing has one undeniable economic advantage. The main material for battery operation is lead, and this metal practically does not go out of circulation. With a certain purification procedure and the addition of the necessary elements to it, lead again acquires its conductive properties. Used batteries are also used in production at the Taldikorgan battery plant. They go through a process of complete crushing and the question arises, how can plastic, lead and lead paste be separated from all this mass? Thanks to scientific technologies, all this mass goes through a hydrolysis process and due to its specific gravity, plastic, lead and lead paste are separated. Thus, secondary raw materials are recycled again. To get metals suitable for future batteries using secondary raw materials, you need to give lead a new life. For this, lead is processed in the smelter shop where giant fire furnaces operate. This place resembles the underworld. It is called remelting housing. Recycled lead is taken here and is melted at a temperature of 600 degrees. Next, this rough lead is used in batteries production. After the primary smelting, the lead solidifies and re-enters the furnace. Here, specialists work with liquid metal. It is very important to comply with all technical safety measures in this area. If even a drop of water gets on liquid lead, the effect will be the same as if you pour water into hot oil. Only instead of oil, liquid metal will sprinkle from the conveyor. 
After being melted, the lead is brought to a foundry site in such blocks, each weighing 33 kilograms. These blocks are melted down, and as a result, such a shunt is obtained from them. This is the inner part of the battery. It weighs about 130 grams, and over 250 of these shunts come out of one lead block. Here we work with lead shunts. This is such a lattice, which should exclude underfills and stitches. Thus the product is approved. What is it made of now? What is its composition? Here is the alloy, special antimony alloy. This alloy is specially developed for this type of battery and is cast in the remelting section. How does it function in the battery? In the future, a lead paste is applied to it to generate a chemical reaction. The paste interacts with the electrolyte, resulting in cathodes and anodes, thus generating electricity. That is, in simple terms, plus and minus. Yes, one terminal is a plus, the other is a minus. You say you produce different batteries for different countries. What is the difference? Lab composition differs. For hot countries such as the United Arab Emirates, we use a different lab composition because there is a very hot climate. Kazakhstan and other countries need another lab composition. The plant uses one more technology for the production of shunts. Lad is rolled into such long sheets of a certain thickness. Further, using a stencil, the necessary part of the future batteries simply cut out of these sheets. Over the years of operation and modernization of its production, the plant has significantly expanded the sales markets for its products. Today we cooperate with the European countries as Poland, Germany, the United Arab Emirates, almost the entire CIS market, except for the Baltic market. We kept all our business connections. In each market we have not one, but two or three consumers. After the battery is assembled, it is placed in an electrolyte solution. It is a mixture of sulfuric acid and highly purified distilled water. Due to the decomposition of sulfuric acid molecules into ions, the battery undergoes accumulation and return of an electric discharge. This imposes a great responsibility on both us and our partners who distribute our products. So we will try to maintain our reputation and produce the highest quality products. Now we see the final part of the battery production line, assembly workshop. Despite the entire automated line, the batteries are assembled manually. At each stage, the factory workers control that all parts are in place test the batteries for strength, and when the batteries are tested, they go to the finished product warehouse. And that's all. Future batteries are ready. In general, the capacity of the enterprise is about 3 million batteries per year, which are then sent to different countries under the brand made in Kazakhstan. Next, my study of the production potential of Almaty region led me to Kerbalak region, where in a picturesque place there is a plant that specializes in the production of cement, a building material for cities. Please note that you will not see any harmful emissions from this plant because it operates according to the most modern environmental standards. The construction of this plant began in 2018 and lasted only two years. This is Kazakhstan's newest enterprise for the production of cement with unique technological capabilities. Today, 15 cement producing enterprises with a capacity of more than 16 million tons of products per year operate in the country. 
The plant has already been built. This plant is a Singapore-Kazakhstan joint venture. The production capacity is 1,200,000 tons of cement per year. We fit into this figure. To date, we produce and sell all raw materials in the city of Almaty and Almaty region. The construction site of this plant was not chosen by chance. Firstly, there are quarries nearby, where the elements necessary for the production of cement are mined, limestone, clay and iron ore. Secondly, the Almaty Taldikor Gun Highway passes just a few kilometers from here, which greatly facilitates the transportation of goods to their destinations, large construction sites in the city and region. Now, let's talk about the production. Now I am at the starting point of cement production. Here, every second, huge trucks bring one of the main elements of cement, limestone. Behind me is a huge crusher, which turns this limestone into smaller ones. And then the process of making cement starts. In general, without cement, humanity would not have seen such brilliant creations as the Great Wall of China, the pyramids or the Roman pantheon. The history of cement goes back centuries. Even the ancient Romans knew that volcanic deposits from Vesuvius were hardening. When they were mixed with certain elements, a mixture which later became a building material appeared. In this crushing complex, huge millstones grind the limestone into small stones. This is only the initial stage of cement production. To obtain a finished product, the plant has a complex production cycle. First, each component of the cement is crushed to make it easier to transport and then mixed with other constituent elements. Limestone already crushed from larger fractions into small ones goes to this conveyor belt. It is specially treated with water to avoid heavy dust emission. Next, this limestone goes to the warehouse. Let's go and see. To get to the warehouse, already crushed limestone has to overcome 492 steps. Here is a limestone warehouse. Look how much fraction is stored here. Ten minutes ago, these were huge blocks of rock and now it is crushed limestone, which will continue to be processed. Here one cannot but admire the power of human thought, which is still capable of partially subjugating the forces of nature. Another warehouse room, where sand, ore and clay are stored, was built without a single weld. This whole structure is prefabricated. It is equipped with new technologies that make production an absolutely environmentally friendly process. Now we are in the warehouse of inert materials. These are the future components of the cement. This room is illuminated by natural light, resulting in an efficient energy conservation. This helps to preserve the initial properties of the rock. There is no direct sunlight, wind, snow, water or moisture. Of course, this ensures good quality of the cement. The next step in cement production is mixing all the necessary ingredients. This process begins in such huge containers. They get materials that will soon form clinker, the basis of cement. Depending on the brand of cement, these materials are mixed in the right proportions and turn into a homogeneous mess. This section is the roasting shop where the material is completely processed. The material includes clay, limestone and iron ore. A special dispenser takes the required component part, that is, this is the future clinker, the basis of the cement. It goes to the raw mill. Here it is all ground up and turned into flour. Then it is brought to the stove, the heart of our workshop. 
I've seen many different businesses, but the scale of this plant and its technology amazed me. I came to the very heart of the cement plant. This huge rotating pipe behind me is the same kiln in which the collected material is being fired for the future cement. The peculiarity of this kiln is that, firstly, the firing inside this kiln takes place at a temperature of 1500 degrees. Outside of this oven, the temperature is about 340 degrees. I am at a distance of 70 meters from this stove and I feel the heat radiating from it in my direction. The inside of this furnace is lined with special refractory bricks. Well, at some time, this brick is checked to identify the emerging deformations. The most interesting and curious thing is that the operation of this oven sometimes comes to curious situations. The fact is that when the temperature rises, satellites detect it and transmit a signal to the Ministry of Emergency Situations, as if a fire broke out in this region. The Ministry of Emergency Situations immediately responds, calls the plant, and the plant staff members explain that this is just how the furnace works. Such a unique technological miracle works for the benefit of Kazakhstan citizens in Almaty region. Approximately every three hours, this oven is filled with a new portion of the substance. As a result of firing, the rock is dried by 100%, which excludes the possibility of cement sticking at this stage. Also, chemical reactions taking place inside the oven solidify individual elements, guaranteeing the future strength of the product. This equipment is fully automated. A person is involved here only in the inspection process. In fact, there is no dust as filters provide special protection here. Air filters absorb all this dust and take away. The electrostatic precipitator then cleans it. This all contributes to the environmentally friendly production. To prevent failures or any emergency situations at the plant, employees provide constant control over all this complex technological process. The company has installed the latest automatic equipment that reacts to the slightest deviations from the production cycle. From a hot street I came to a cool room. This is the control center for the entire plant. It features automatic equipment, monitors, cameras which record everything that happens at the plant. But the most unique camera is located inside the oven that I just told you about. Here, look, the camera shows everything that happens inside. This is the process of firing that takes place at a temperature of 1500 degrees. In fact, now you and I have looked into the heart of the volcano. Now, after such a volcanic bath, the cement should cool down. It is transported through sealed channels to special warehouses. Only people with special access are allowed to enter it. Clinker heated in a furnace emits toxic fumes, so all this mass must cool down, after which the material does not pose any danger to humans. Then the cement goes for unloading by special cement trucks or for packaging in bags. And then from this cement, produced under the brand name Made in Kazakhstan, new buildings, transport interchanges, residential complexes and many other infrastructure facilities of the country's cities will be built. This is the honor of the plant and its staff members. Large and small organizations, private companies that receive our products haven't ever complained about the quality. When they give positive feedback on our work, we are very pleased. Today, we have no complaints about our work. Surprisingly, for almost a whole day of filming at the plant, I did not get dirty. Today, you and I visited only three of the nine chosen enterprises of Almaty region and learned the economic and production potential of the region. Subscribe to the Kazakh TV channel on YouTube, comment, like, be sure to click on the bell to be informed of new releases. It was the Made in Kazakhstan project. My name is Anton Todorov, and I'll see you in the next episode.